Uh, what got us the Nobel Prize was that my supervisor, Gerard Maru, and I came up with a way to increase the intensity of the laser. And what that means, if you, uh, it's how much you pack the energy into a small volume. And so an analogy would be with water, that if you're in the shower and you, if you'll steam, that's uh, very uh, low density water, you hardly feel it. But if you splash yourself with water, you feel it. But if you get an ice ball thrown at you in the face, you really feel it. And so that's what we did, was figure out a way to squeeze the energy into that small volume and to make it like an ice ball, and so that it would come in and just slap uh, the atoms so hard the electrons would have to fly off. For the eye surgery? Yes, for the medicine. I, uh, well, I think the eye surgery is very well uh, looked after now. They may find new applications, but I think we understand how to, using this uh, intensity to machine um, transparent objects such as the cornea, that's the outside of your eye, or the glass that's in your cell phones. Before, it wasn't possible to machine transparent objects because it was based on absorbing the light, which meant that it had to be black so that it would absorb the light. Okay. Whereas clear means the light goes right on through. Mm -hmm. But of course, it goes right on through where the intensity is not very high, but only when you focus it down in that one little spot does it damage. The rest of the time, all the rest of the glass is left alone. And so it's a different thing that we can make these very precise holes inside, on the surface, wherever we want, and, and use it that way. So people are finding new applications for it, but I think the science now is understood about that. In just this one year, you mean? Uh-huh. Well, I don't, I mean, science is a long-term thing. I mean, I don't know that there's been uh, things changing on a one-year scale that's I can tell you right off the top of my head, mostly because I've been traveling around the world rather than going to conferences and hearing what other people are doing. So uh, I think people have to understand that science is something that takes a long time to evolve. Every day new things are happening, but they always are steps on somebody else's work and so it keeps moving forward that way. Um, I'm still working on, on short intense pulses and new nonlinear optical techniques. It changes then what wavelength we operate and we try to go to colors of light, which is actually not even we see anymore, uh, that don't have these types of sources. Also, I still try to make the pulses shorter and intense so that we can do different types of nonlinear interactions. But I still work on pure physics, not, not actual applications. No, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I think I've, I've moved forward. I mean, I think the one tough thing is that I am married to a scientist, most women, because in my day, very few women were in science, so it was very easy for us to find a husband. Uh, and so most scientists of my era are married, women scientists are married to men. And if you have two careers that are very hard, there's not that many science jobs. That's what I love. would love to see more and more science jobs. Uh, you know, I gave up on the academic track to let him have his career, but then he gave up on his to follow me. So uh, there's always some give and take. But, but no, I did not have any of the discrimination and I did, I did not find any of those other problems. I don't like to uh, single out one gender over the other because I do believe in gender equity so I think my message would be the same for both uh, men and women and that uh, only you know what you really want to do and so it's up to you to figure out what that is and what is the spark for your imagination or the spark to make you get out of bed and don't listen to other people. I mean I think you know yourself better than anybody else does.